Hi everyone, this is the video where you get to learn how to get started on your first exercise as a C3RO team member. Welcome aboard. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to two more important people who are essential parts of the C3RO team, Michael and Diana. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sislov, one of the team managers for C3RO. We are so thrilled to have you as part of the team. Uh, the work we do here has the potential to impact the standard of care in radiation oncology for the years to come. Diana and I will be helping to run things from behind the scenes, so if you encounter any difficulties or if you have any questions, please send an email to support at econsword.org and we will get back to you post haste. Welcome to the collaborative. Hi, I'm Diana. I am also a team manager working along with Mike and the entire um, group. Uh, my role includes technical support and um, uh, data curation and statistical analyses of our study endpoints. All right, let's get going. A row, a ruction, a fracas and a fray, a rough and tumble free for all, a broiler ball of a A rock is to be reckoned with if anyone wants to dare. We're taking the road to the dawn or on down for the Donnybrook affair. I will go, I will lead you there. I will spend a week or two. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this is certainly going to be a learning experience, so we welcome any feedback about how we can make the process. Uh, more uh, enjoyable and, and easy for you, uh, feel free to contact us at support at econtour.org. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. It's true, we definitely will not be perfect coming out of the gate on this ambitious project, but like anything worth doing, we will learn as we go along. I'm going to now take you step by step through how to get started from logging in for the first time to finding your patient data sets to drawing your anatomical contours. So let's go. Before we begin, I'd like to show you one thing that could be quite useful over time. If you go to the public Prono site, that's just Prono.com, this is a site we use to help train people on their own time because we have a lot of training videos that can uh, demonstrate features and how to do things. So if you go to features and training, over on the left is a, a set of topics you can navigate and under each topic you'll find a list of subtopics. So for example, if we went to the, the major topic of contouring and we wanna learn how to do manual contouring, you just click that. And for any of these, there'll be a summary, but also then one or more training videos. You can just press play and get to know how to use Prono. So you can do that. It's a resource available to everyone. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you specifically how you will get going in the C3RO program. So it won't be a prono training per se. It'll just be how to log in the first time, how to create uh, your password, etc., and then how to go in and start creating contours. So we'll get to that right now. Well, first what you're going to do is you're going to type c3ro.prono.com. That's going to be the specific domain used for this. Then what you're going to do the very first time is you need to create uh, you need to create your password. So once you have been set up as a user, which the um, C3RO team managers will do for you, then when you type in that URL, you will be prompted to enter your username, which is going to be the email that you registered with, and then your password. Well, you don't have a password yet. You're going to set that. So you click this little button that says click here to set or reset your password. Once you do that, then you go to your email inbox and you will should immediately receive an email from Prono with a button in it that says verify uh, who you are and enter your default password. Now at any time after you log in, you can change and update that password, but that's what will enable you to create your password for the first time and then log in for subsequent times. So again, you just click here. It tells you an email will be sent. You click send email. And then you go and check your inbox, and once you do that verification, you should be able to sign in with that password. This is what your email will look like. It will come from Prono Support, and it'll say password change request. You just click confirm password change. That will what enable you to enter your password. So it's, it prompts you for your new password, and then you have to type it twice to make sure you get it correct. And when you've entered your default password that you wanna use, go ahead and click the blue button. And that has set your password. Now you can go back to c3ro.prono.com and sign in for the first time. So I have typed in my password and now I am logged in for the first time. 
which is pretty great. Now, what you're going to see, all the users are gonna be set up so that you're doing contouring blindly. So no matter how many hundreds of team members you have participating in the C3RO program, you won't see their names or their contours. So your work is private. What we will do is be showing the population results at the end of each event. But when you're generating your contours, you're only gonna see the options of the patient that has been specifically, the data set that has been specifically assigned to you. So for the very first month, uh, you'll go up, and the, this little widget up here is allows you to select the workspace. That's like a subfolder of patients on this Prono domain. We're gonna create a new workspace for each case or for each new event. So for the very first time, you'll only have one workspace. It'll be called case one, August, 2021. And when you select that, which will be the default, you'll see the patient that has been assigned to you. And you're ready to go in, highlight that patient and start drawing contours. So I'm gonna do that now. To select a patient, you can either double click that row or you can single click the ID. Uh, Prono will run in any browser, so Google or Safari are the preferred browsers. Uh, you don't need to install any software. So right now, I won't go through all of the Prono features. I'll focus just on how to do your contouring. Oh, time out. Let's pause this training right here because I forgot to tell you something very important. Over here on the right, for each patient data set, you will see a documents folder. For each C3RO exercise, you'll find one or more documents in this folder that give you pertinent details and instructions about this particular exercise. So first things first, after you find your patient, read the instructions. The first thing you'll notice is there's already a, a CT image set that's wait, waiting for you and a structure set that has been created, but it's just a template. So over here on the left, if you go down from the browse menu to the structures menu, you'll see these are the structures. This is like your to-do list of the structures that we're gonna be studying for this particular data set. Any given uh, event, take the time to do hopefully all, but as many of the contours as you can. If you don't have time to finish them all, that's absolutely fine. If there's some structures you've never contoured before, uh, you can feel free to skip them. Um, so just finish whatever structures you can and hopefully all of them. Just one, one data set roughly every month shouldn't be more than I don't know, one hour a month, uh, maybe maybe a little more, a little less, depending on how fast you contour. In this particular data set, the very first one, we are gonna give the option to do the left brachial plexus, which is a bit of a bear. It can take a little bit of time. But yeah, if you have experience doing this on CT, then please take the time to do it because the variation in that particular organs should be very interesting. Anyway, you'll see that not all of the structures are turned on. These are little eyeballs which basically toggles the structures on and off, but there aren't any contours yet. That's why you don't see anything. So let me show you first some of the tools you can use. Before you contour, you're gonna to wanna to optimize your display. So the mouse options are navigation, window level, zoom, zoom to selection, zoom to fit, and pan. Um, you can see I'm in the pan mode now. It's exactly what it says. You can move any of the views around. We have axial, sagittal, and coronal. If you wanna zoom up, you can get to that mode one of uh, two ways. First of all, you can do the right mouse menu and click zoom, and then just use the left mouse click and pull it to the left or right or up or down and it will zoom. Go back to pan this way. Another way you can get from mouse feature to mouse feature is just to click the middle wheel. So that's pretty convenient. You can go, you can quickly go from pan to navigate to window level, to zoom. That's a kind of one way to do it. And you can also use the toolbar buttons up here if that's if you're comfortable with that. The navigation is pretty useful because as you're doing contouring, you do want to monitor the, uh, the sagittal and coronal. So you can always navigate around. Just click the mouse and pull it wherever you want and you'll see the other views updating in real time. As it is now, we'll draw the contours only in the axial view, but you will see a, a reconstruction of them in the sagittal and coronal. We don't have contouring tools for the sagittal and coronal yet, but we will eventually. Okay, so uh, window level, you can do one of two ways. Just left and right will be your uh, uh, brightness or your level. Up and down is your contrast or your window width. 
So you can kind of get the feel for how that works and you can constantly optimize your window and level depending on which organ you're drawing. You can also, if you, if you like to look at Hounsfield's numbers and it's the CT, you can, you can actually type in or use this little widget to, to select exact numbers for the window and level. So if you know you like a level of say 40 and a window width of 1,000, feel free to type those in. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna take much time, but I'll show you how to use some of the contouring tools. Uh, and I'll just, I'll do a, a rough interpretation of in this case, the easiest one's probably the heart. So I'll just do the heart. Uh, so what you'll do is on the structures menu, you will click edit structure set. It's this blue button in the upper right. So click that. Now you're in edit mode. Um, so I'm going to zoom up a little bit. I'm going to pan down just a little bit and I'm going to find the heart. I might window level a slight bit. And I've kind of roughly approximated the heart. Let me just show you some, use it as an example to show some of the contouring tools. Most of the exercises we're going to do in C3RO are going to be your manual skills, your manual interpretation. Uh, we do have tools for doing auto margins and Booleans, but we probably won't be using those. We'll be drawing them manually. In some events, we will enable you to test your auto segmentation algorithms, in which case we'll give you the option to download the data, create structure sets in whatever software does the auto seg, and then to upload as an RT structure set. But for the time being, we're doing it manual only, so you'll be doing your contouring with the base set of Prono tools. And first you have to select which structure you're gonna draw. Whichever one you select, you can see here, editing CTV chest wall, editing CTV IMN, etc. Well, I'm just gonna draw a little bit of the heart. So it says editing the heart. And I'll show you the draw tool or the pencil tool. Now an option here is to smooth lines. I would always select yes on this because what you're gonna see here is you can go in and you can just kind of click a few points on the surface and it'll automatically give you a nice rounded interpretation. So I'm not doing a continuous draw. I'm just clicking a few points on the surface and it gives you a good round surface. And then when you're ready to close it, just go back and click and you see we've got one contour there. If I wanted to do a little bit of editing, I could either do it with this tool, and in which case you're gonna be adding on or carving out. So if you wanted to use the draw tool and make it a little bigger, you can kind of do that and it'll make it larger. But when I'm doing editing, I, I like to use the paint tool. The paintbrush, you can change the width either with this slider bar, or you can use the Q or the E key on your keyboard. So E makes it bigger. Q makes it smaller. That's kind of like what gaming keyboards do. So if I wanted to do a quick edit of this, you can use it as an eraser. If you ever have to do a bifurcated structure, we can do that just so that's more than one contour on a slice. Just hold down the Alt key while you're drawing the separate structures. So I hold down the Alt ALT and I can draw bifurcated structures. So you can do that and draw as many as you want on the slices. Now, I don't want these here, obviously, so to erase them, I can either erase them at the paint tool, or I might just clear the current slice and start over. So again, let's go back. I'm gonna just use the pen tool with the smoothing on. and close it up. Now you can use the middle wheel to go to the next slice. You can use the navigation to, uh, wheel. You can use page up and page down. I like to use the mouse wheel. So you'll see here, let me quickly draw this slice. Now you'll see, you can start to see the reconstructions on the sagittal and coronal. We can use a quick, a good gauge of, of uh, you know, a sanity check on your contours. What I'm gonna do now though, so I'm gonna skip a couple slices because we do have an interpolation tool. So if you have a contour that's not changing drastically from slice to slice, you might decide in some cases to contour every other slice and then use the interpolation tool. So I'll show you how that's done. And I'm gonna skip another couple slices. By the way, if you, a lot of people just like to draw with the paintbrush tool, so that's pretty easy too. I like, uh, I like the really smooth edges, which is why I use that, that pen 
or pencil tool with the smoothing. But sometimes people like to just paint in volumes, whatever you prefer. Skip a couple slices, let me paint in another. So you see over here on the sagittal and coronal, there are now gaps in between the, the contours. You can fill those gaps by clicking this button, which is called interpolate. And now it's filled in the gaps. So if I go through slice to slice, it's pretty reasonable and you can go in and fine tune and edit if you want. Otherwise, uh, you can just keep doing. So I'm gonna now do a very rough job uh, just so I can show you what it's like to finish a structure and move on to the next. Now at any given time, you don't have to finish a structure. You can start editing another structure or you can save your work and come back later, whatever you want. It's, it's stored on the cloud, so you can always come back from, where, anywhere, from anywhere you want at any time. By the way, if you like to do a continuous draw, you just keep the mouse held down. So depending on how much coffee you had that day, you can decide to do a continuous draw. And again, I'm skipping a lot of slices now. I'll use the paintbrush, just show, again, reminding you all the different features. And let's say this is like the last slice I want. And uh, don't hold me to the accuracy of this contour at this point, <laughs> uh, just using it as an example. So now I've got a lot of gaps. Uh, sometimes the gaps are bigger than one slice, but you can still use the interpolate and it's filled in the whole volume. So let's say now I zoom down and I like to take a navigation through. Does it look reasonable? Kind of looks reasonable. You can see down here. Um, it's actually not too bad. There's a couple places I would clearly edit it. And that was probably due to the interpolation. But let's say you were happy with this heart contour. No problem. Now you can go on um, to any of the other structures and you just start doing the same. Now at any given, I won't bother to, to contour more, but it, when you're ready to contour, just click that structure and start contouring. If you ever mess up really bad and you want to delete the whole contour, just select it and then click this trash can. That'll clear the contour from all the slices. And also, um, uh, any of your work, intermittent work, uh, you can save it and come back later. And the way you do that is go ahead and just hit commit. So if you hit this commit button, it'll allow you to do a label. And I might say, I finished the heart. That's a little note to myself. And what's neat is that the structures, and when you're on the structures tab, you can go over on the right to the toolbar and click versions. All of your versions of your committed changes will be saved which is pretty neat because then you can kind of, uh, you can save as many of these versions as you want. So you can always go back to a prior version if you really messed something up and you can just track your progress. So we don't throw it, since it's all cloud-based, you don't have to worry about, you know, disk space or anything. So the initial version for these see-through arrows, those will always be the, just the template with no contours drawn. Um, create as many new versions as you want just by selecting edit structure set and hitting commit again. One important thing is when you finish your contouring for that particular data set, don't forget to commit because we will only have access to mine the committed data. If you save it as a draft, that won't be accessible for the analytics. So make sure, I just use commit all the time so that it, I can see my, uh, uh, my history of updates. So you would wanna go and do as many of these as you have time for, as you're comfortable doing, and hit commit. Really, that's all the work you have to do. And then to, to be able to see all the different population opinions and hear the experts give a commentary on the results, we will assemble those at the end of each month or at the end of each study period, and we will go over those in our recorded and live talk show. So if you're able to attend that live, it's great. You can ask your questions. If you can't attend it live, no problem. We will always post an edited video of that results presentation at the end of each event before we start the next body site. Well, that's about it for now. We can't wait to see your contours and we can't wait to start learning together. Thank you.